good day here in our city. Now, quickly, we've got a bit of time to tell you that the bees are coming in their droves. I didn't know what you were saying there. And to celebrate <laughs> this next week, we are coming to you from the Mayfield site where all these bees have been a hiding. Oh, they're going to be swarming Manchester. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. But here, back to today's show, and we are firstly meeting Holly and Mo from a production from the Greater Manchester Fringe Festival. It's called The Black Stuff. And it's bloody fantastic. It is. So, who's who? You're Mo, you're uh, Holly. That's yeah. right. Tell us about what you're doing when this in this play then. So, I play a character called Clarissa, right. who's the wife of Charles, who's the inventor of rubber. And my. Sorry. What's what's the rubber in this? The actual rubber, as in like what started the inventor in the 1800s. Of ru- have you been swallowing a dictionary? <laughs> <laughs> So is that what it's about then, the history of rubber? Essentially how it came about, uh, Holly will probably be able to tell you better than that. Yeah, well it's a a quirky musical about about rubber and about how it was sort of discovered stroke invented because what this guy did was he, he took natural rubber and he made it useful by coming up with this chemical process that stops it from melting all the time. Um, um, but it took him years to do it, so it's, it's kind of charting that process. And what was his surname? Charles Goodyear. Goodyear. Yeah. 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 That's, That's where Goodyear comes from. That's where Goodyear comes from. Michelin. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's a great story, and I, I don't think it's been told a lot, really, because mm. people like Belinda don't really know how it all started. So no, I, I know it. a bit about rubber, but I don't wear it at weekends because I always look like a hot water bottle or an air, an air in cupboard. <laughs> well, <laughs> this guy was very successful, wasn't he? But at the other side, on the other side of the coin, his family life suffered, and I suppose mm. that's where you come in. Yeah, we kind of get to expose the non-luxurious side of the story, um, the terrible things that happened, and what he kind of went through in order to get to where he was, or where he eventually got to. Um, mm. So it's a really, really lovely musical, horrendously, like, really, really great written, like some great musical numbers in there by Holly again. Um, you but can miss them. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wrote and composed it. And composed Yeah, it. she's incredible. Absolutely wow. Incredible. Yeah. These smart ones, you just do your editing. Don't they do not. everything, they uh, do yeah. everything. No, it's mm-hmm. great um, though, because to see a woman kind of like, yeah, there's a woman team directing. Yeah, we've got Liz Carney yeah. as yeah. directing as well. Yeah. So. We rule the world, don't we? Oh yeah, when we put our minds to it. <laughs> smash the patriarchy. <laughs> we have a bit in it. Smash uh, the patriarchy. So yeah. what type of songs, what type of feel would you say the songs have got then? It's kind of a mixture of stuff. Um, I, th- I wouldn't say that it's your typical musical theatre kind of stuff, no. is it, really? Not no, at all. No, it's kind of, my, my style is kind of a bit of soul, a bit of jazz, a bit of pop, so. Um, and I was a songwriter bef- before I got into theatre, so I've, I've kind of just taken that same style with me in, into musical theatre. Fabulous. We even have some rap. Rap? Yeah. yeah. Can you do a rap for us? Yeah. We can, okay. Can you? Yeah, all right, well, go on then, take it away, <laughs> take it away. One, two, three. Is this the library founded by Benjamin Franklin where free folk can enter whatever their social standing? My name's Clarissa and I'm looking for knowledge. Hello, can I come in? Please acknowledge. Yes, this is the Library Company of Philadelphia. There isn't a subject we can't find on a shelf for ya. But Clarissa, when we say free folk, we mean men. You and your children can't come in. Oh, I'm surrounded by men who are trying to hold me down, stop me from learning skills. I need to keep my children around. I'm not going to be stopped because I don't have the right appendage. I'm going back as a man. My gender amended. Woo! I love it. Who needs Hamilton? <laughs> <laughs> valid, valid. <laughs> Just come uh, see the black stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where's it on it? Where can we see it? So tomorrow we're on at the chapel. Yeah, that's Manchester Friday, um, the 13th. And then uh, on the Saturday as well. We're at the King's Arms. That's right. The King's Arms yeah. upstairs. Yes. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Make a date. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. We look forward to seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the black stuff. The black stuff, go and see it. There's a mixture of everything, a bit of humour, a bit of songs, a bit of a, a bit of art in it as well. Uh, yes. yes, there is some art. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's got it all. Uh, uh, no, thank well, you. thank you very much for coming. Lots right then, how do you buy things these days? Do you buy them on cash or card? It's time to say hello to Dan as he tells you about this fucking trend. Oh, I'm like the queen and never carry cash. I'm okay. trying to be a queen. Smartphones, online and mobile banking and tap and go contactless payments are rapidly changing the way we pay for things. Last year the number of payments made by debit cards across the UK overtook the number of cash payments for the first time according to figures from the Trade Association UK Finance. 
the growing popularity of contactless payments which allows people to make payments of up to £30 with a single swipe was a big driver behind debit cards overtaking cash. There were 13.2 billion debit card payments in 2017, while 13.1 billion payments were made in cash. So I look at how we pay is changing and what the future holds with these gadgets. By the end of 2017, there were nearly 119 million contactless cards in circulation, with 78% of debit cards and 62% of credit cards being contactless. Nearly two thirds of us now use contactless payments. My research has found those aged 25 to 34 years are the most likely to use contactless with more than three quarters of this age group making contactless payments in 2017. Those aged 65 and over are less likely to use contactless payments than younger generations. More than half in this age group did make contactless payments also in 2017. And finally, where does the cash fit in, I hear you ask? Do not fear. There's still a place for cash and for many people it's an essential way of getting by day to day. As many people still rely on cards, although it's vital that these people are still able to access the cash they need. So there we are, everything you need to know about the future of contactless payments. Back to you guys in the studio. Titters, how are you? I'm very well indeed, ladies. You look lovely. I love that colour of that shirt. I know, and it matches his eyes, doesn't it? Hey, look, that is veins. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> So what are we talking about this week then? Uh, we're on Tempin Bowling this week. Tempin Bowling? Yes, lovely. It's a lovely game. Uh, you bowl, you get your your ball and you throw it down a wooden structure or a synthetic lane and there's ten pins at the end. That's it, there. And it's all about knocking more pins down than the next guy, really. I used to be in a ten pin bowling club. When I was 13, I used to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ten pin bowling at Berry. And I used to get some strikes, it was great. I never liked 10 pin bowling, I didn't like shoes. Oh, yeah. Because they were flat. Yeah, they and were. did a pair of my Nikes in for a pair of them things, I don't think so. <laughs> and they were always a bit sweaty and smelly, weren't they? Because other people had worn them. Oh, yeah. But anyway, get on. Right, anyway, sorry. Uh, you can play with different weighted balls. Mm -hmm. And oh. generally. Do you and put your finger inside the ball? Three. Three fingers inside. Mm -hmm. The size does matter because the heavier the weight, yeah. comparatively speaking, it will take more. Pen, uh, pins out, so you might have a score more. You can't have nails, though, can you, when you're doing that? I wouldn't imagine so, no. no. I'll have to take your word for that one. It's just not something I've tried playing with, really. If yeah. you'd be stuck, you'd be going down the lane with your yeah, ball mm -hmm. attached. Right. And then, well, basically the game has ten frames. And each frame is two balls down the lane. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you hurl your ball down the lane. I hurl your ball down, down the lane. lane. What? What? Oh, right. oh, and try yeah. and make your pins. Now. There's different ways of scoring. Is there? If with your first ball you knock them all over, you get a... Strike! Correct. Yes. You see? And then if you don't get a strike and you only get eight of them... You get a half strike, yeah? No, 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 no. You might only get eight and there's two left. And on your second ball you've got those two. That would be called a spare. A spare ball. Very thought of it. Mm -hmm. Right. And the scoring... I knew a man from Russia that had a spare ball, you know. It was called a Nikobolikov. Very famous Russian. Right, so, if you take your first ball and you get a strike, uh, so that's your, the frame over. When you go up the next time, if you, your next two scoring balls are added to the ten uh -huh. that you've uh, scored in the first one. So the maximum you can get over the ten frames is 300 points. That is by going strike. 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 Oh, I thought I knew this. Oh, what is all complicated? You're confusing yeah. me now. Flipping heck. But however, if you only got, on the next two balls, only got nine of them down, you would score ten for that strike and then another nine added on to your score. But well, we're not bothered about the scores though. Who plays this? The Gay City Bowlers, yeah. Uh, would you like a little piece from uh, their advertising? Oh, well, why not, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tidy up for you, with your mind in the gutter. Mm -hmm. Do you enjoy putting three fingers in? Done it. Did you get off? Throwing your ball down an alley. I already said that as well. Right. So, uh, if that's like we might go join. I know. If you're lucky, you can join the Gay City Bowlers and they meet, I think it's the middle of each month. I did try to contact them. Sadly, you didn't reply to me. Oh. So, but I am prepared to go along and we'll take some photographs. I could have a game one night. and that's if you don't mind taking a token. 
Do it. Do it. Yeah. This, this needs to happen. I think it right. should, yeah. Team yeah. bowling night. Yeah, team bowling. Should we go bowling? Come as long as team we have bowling. bumpers. Oh, oh so they don't no, go down the gutter. I like the, the things that they use when they've got the little bit there. You just roll it down. down. And it goes off on its own. So, um, you're not interested in scoring, are you? Not interested in the scoring, but what I am interested in is what are you going to be talking about next week? Yes! Well, next week I'm having a little change from sport. Oh, and I'm going to give you some vital information oh. about bees. <gasps> buzz off. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can buzz off now, can't they? You can do it. Oh, there we go! Another week comes to an end, doesn't it? But don't forget, we are coming to you from the Mayfield Depot next week where we are all going to be buzzing. Everything's going to be swarming the place and I've got loads of guests going on. We have indeed including Barry Walsh, the Cotterful Fodian, ladies and gentlemen, and a whole lot more. Oh, until then, thanks for watching and making this amazing watching your, your Manchester! Manchester.